Just a few situational coaching tips I think might help you in what I consider percentage softball. Let's take, for instance, the early part of a ball game. Knowing the opposing pitcher makes a big difference, whether you've got a pitcher who gives up a few runs or you've got someone who only gives up one or two per game. It makes a big difference as to what you do as a coach, whether you try to play for a big inning or whether you want to try to score one run right off the bat. Because if you score that first run, that means that the pressure is on the other team to have to, to score two runs to take that lead back away from you. Now, if you've got a girl who gives up five, six, or seven runs a game, now you can play for a bigger inning earlier in the game. And then once you get to the mid part of the game, just keep tacking on one or two runs as you can. Play for the bigger innings early. Let's consider the second part of a game. Let's consider late innings. Let's consider the fifth inning, the sixth inning, the seventh inning. Let's consider those innings in terms of us having a four, five, six, seven run lead. How many times have you ever been involved in a game where you had that big a lead and the first girl gets up and hits a little flare over the infield? The next one hits a little squibbler back through the middle. The next one hits a medium liner to your outfielder that she runs in and just she gets to it, it's a one hop and she catches it. Now you've got the bases loaded. They haven't hit one ball hard yet and now the next girl hits one off the wall or over the fence. All of a sudden they picked up three runs. What I like to do late in a ball game is to bring my outfielders in five steps or maybe three steps depending upon the size of your ballpark from what I call a quote normal position. When you bring them in basically what you're doing is you're challenging the other team and when you have a four or five run lead to hit the ball over your head and who cares if it goes over your head because it's only a double but 80 to 90 percent of the balls in softball are hit in front of the outfielders. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to increase our chances or percentage of catching those balls. So now we move our girls in three steps to five steps from the regular position. That little flare that's the one hopper to the outfield at a normal position now all of a sudden becomes an out. That little line drive that's a one hopper to the outfielder now becomes an out. And what we're doing is we're increasing our chances because remember this, in the fifth, sixth, or seventh inning, you only have nine outs left. Or if you're in the sixth and seventh, you only have six outs less. So what you're trying to do is eliminate those number of outs in the game. Let's talk about our infield for a minute. In that situation with my outfield three to five steps in, I spread my middle infielders back and deeper because all I want right here is to eliminate another out. If you get a runner on first base, and you bring your infield in to turn a double play. How many times have you been in a situation where they hit a double play ball that was just out of reach of your infielder? Now it creates more rallies. The next one's just out of reach of an infielder. What I do there is spread my defense back in the center part of the field. I'll take an out. Ground ball, it might be a double play or might not. I'll just take a force out and eliminate. Now we had six outs, we're down to five then we're down to four, then we're down to three. But what I am creating for me and my team is a chance to get those outs rather than turning double plays and playing in a normal position. Let's say you've got a young group. Let's say you've got a group of kids who, for instance, are playing on a, maybe a normal field might be 300 fences, but they're symmetrical all the way around. But you've got a group of young girls that are probably not going to be hitting balls out of that ballpark. That, for a young group of girls, becomes a very large ballpark. I would gap my outfielders in the outfield because the majority of the balls hit are hit from right center to left center. And if you keep a chart on them, you'll find that out. So what I would do is move my girls off the line if they were playing in a bigger ballpark. And if they're not in a bigger ballpark, just play normal in that situation. Let's talk about a second base situation here where we still have a four or five run lead. I have seen this happen time and time again in a lot of softball games where we got four run lead, they get a gal hits a double, she's on second base. The next gal hits a single to the outfield, we pick the ball up and try to throw the gal out at home, she's safe, the hitter is on second base again. And I just watch them exchange places and before you know it, guess where we are? We're stuck right in the situation where we're one run ahead and the tying or winning run is at second base. In a situation like that where you've got a four, five, or six run lead and you've got a runner on second base, who cares if she scores? We want to keep that hitter at first base so we always have a force at second or the remote possibility of a double play if she's a slow runner at the plate. 
So what I would do is I would tell my outfielders whatever sign you would like to use. Here we're going second base with a single so that your infielders are relaying this to the outfield so that you're not trying to throw the runner out at home plate. You're throwing a base hit to second base to keep the force play in order. Now the last situation is what I call a no double situation. The game is tied or you're one run ahead. The one thing you want to do as a coach is keep that opposing girl off second base. So from this situation, I will move my outfielders from a normal, normal stance in the outfield back five steps, or maybe three to five, depending upon how far the fence is and how big the park is. By moving back five steps, what you're doing is you're eliminating the double. Sure, you're increasing the chance for the single, but the double over your head puts a tying or winning run on second base, and you cannot afford that. So you're taking that away. The single in front of you now leaves the runner at first base and still leaves you a force at second base. Now what do I do with my infield? At the corners, depending upon the hitter, I can guard both lines and have the girls standing within a foot of the line to make sure a ball can't get between them and the line. Because a ball that gets between me and the line is an automatic double. The ball that does not get between me and the line is either an out, or if it's to my left, it becomes a single and still gives me the force at second base or the possibility of a double play. But you have to take away the doubles late in the game when the game is tied or one run ahead. Now, when do we change out of that situation? As soon as a tying or winning run reaches second base, now we take our girls back off the line because we're trying to cover territory now. Now we bring the girls from a no double situation back into a normal situation because now that's a tying or winning run. And if it's a winning run, you gotta be able to throw it out at the plate. If it's a tying run, you have to be able to stop that. These are some ideas and some hints that as I travel around and, and work with our U.S. Olympic teams and work with uh, high school kids and do camps all over the country and in Europe for Major League Baseball International, as I watch young games and young kids play, these are some of the things that stand out again and again and again. So the last time I was out, I said, you know, the next time I do a video or the next time I talk to a group of coaches, I'm going to pass on the things that I see that might help them play better and more consistent percentage softball.